Good morning, everyone. Ooh, how's everybody doing? Yeah, it's not very cold outside, you know. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I'm so pleased. Uh, John had a commitment this weekend. We have Pam DeFreeze at the piano. Isn't that exciting? We're so pleased that she was able to be here to uh, fill in for John today. He'll be back next Sunday. Um, I, uh, I want, to pay, want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Um, in the bulletin, it talks about the Indian tea that's coming up on Saturday. This is for women and all women of the church, all ages. And we'd love to have you come it's, uh, I don't, some of you, many of you actually came to the Russian tea last year and where we had uh, Russian foods and uh, Russian tea and, and it was a wonderful, fun time for all of us. Well, this is the same kind of thing, only we are celebrating India. And we will have some uh, guests from uh, India that live in our community who will be providing the food and will be uh, giving us some education on what all that, what all that, uh, the tea and everything means. So go ahead, call, uh, talk to Beth Haynes uh, to put in your reservation so that we can have enough food for everyone, enough little tea cakes and things. So um, pay attention to that. Call the church office also to register. The other, I will tell you, that we had an awesome, awesome upward basketball day yesterday. Woohoo! It was wonderful. I tell you, the kids have such energy, and um, and the coaches are wonderful. They are there to right in there with the kids and helping them. And I just was uh, thrilled with the whole day. We had a few glitches. I'm not going to say you know it was a perfect day, but we had a great day, and I learned a lot my first year doing this, but just keep praying for us. Keep praying for us. And uh, I know that we are touching lives in ways that uh, we couldn't otherwise through the Upward program. Um, there is, uh, let's see, Kevin Cook has a special announcement for us this morning. Just use that one. Thank you. Um, Pastor Bob asked me um, earlier this week if I would be able to address the congregation about where the search committee stands in our search and call for a senior pastor. Before I tell you, though, I want to talk a little bit about my family. My father was a plant manager in a metal fabrication shop. And every summer, he would take off two weeks and we would pack the car and the station wagon, and we would have a pop-up camper behind us, and we would take this two-week vacation across the country to a de destination. One year, we drove across the United States to Washington, D.C. A couple years later, we drove across the United States to uh, California. During those trips, we were cramped in the car together. We had to enjoy each other's companies. There were things that we planned to see that we saw, and there were things that we saw that we didn't plan on seeing. <laughs> but through it all, we finally got to our destination. That's where we are at now in the search committee. We are in the car, and we're traveling on a destination. We know where we're going, but God is driving the car. We are the passengers in it. I will let you know that we are getting to a point to where I hope we will have a, an announcement for you soon. But we are not at the destination today. There's still some more mileage to go on the road. There's still some more sights to see. And we have to enjoy each other's company because there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> now, 
please grant us your blessings, keep us in your prayers, keep us in your thoughts, so that we can get to our destination safely, in one piece, without killing each other in the car. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing that with us today. There was another one. Who? Gary. Oh, Gary, that's right. There he is. Right here. <laughs> He's right. It's right here. Thank you. you well, I have a vacation story like Kevin did. But uh, vacation for me, I grew up on a farm. It was generally on Sunday when we didn't bale hay or, or have harvest. So that was uh, a different vacation. I want to uh, announce uh, and, and remind you that the, the Foundation Annual Gala is coming up on February the 9th and ask that you might want to attend and bring friends, and bring family, bring neighbors. Uh, it'll start at 5.30 as it has in the past, very similar to in the past, start at 5.30 with the social time, 6 o'clock is dinner, have entertainment, uh, will be music uh, this year. The meal will be, uh, I think, a turkey-based meal. Uh, we have... Uh, Tickets available in the, in, the, uh, in the parlor, and any of the board members have tickets available. Fred was down there this morning selling a few tickets. We'll sell tickets up to the Sunday, probably right before February the 9th, to so turn in the account. Uh, tickets are $12.50 for adults, two for $25. Uh, children are uh, $6 at 6 through 11. If you had one, at least one request for child care, so child care will be provided if you have children you want to bring. And that will be during the course of the evening. Generally, it wraps up about 8.30. We have a, a, a silent auction in conjunction with the dinner and entertainment. We welcome anyone that want to contribute something to the silent auction to bring it to the church, bring it to the office. Silent auction items will be accepted up to about Wednesday before uh, that Saturday night. Again, it's February the 9th. I encourage you to come. If you have questions, ask any of the board members. You can also ask the office, you can talk to the office, ask Pastor Bob, ask Janet. But uh, it's an opportunity, I think, to come out and have a nice evening, have a nice meal, have some fellowship, uh, and have, a, have, have great stories being told by various people that speak during the course of the evening. Pastor Bob's going to give me better material this year, so uh, we'll, uh, I won't be totally alone on that this time. Any questions? Uh, catch any of us. We'll be around. Uh, any of the board members have tickets, and there's some tickets also in the office. Thank you, and look forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Let's begin our worship time together. I will say part of the phrase, you will finish the phrase for me, okay? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in Let us enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let's try that one again. Let us enter his gates with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's all stand and sing together. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the time that we receive our offering that we give to God as the ushers come forward. It's a new year. Praise God for 2019. Praise God that we woke up today to welcome this day. We come and we bring our gifts to God. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this time that's set aside for us to bring a portion of that which you have blessed us with, to respond to your nature of blessing. Help us, O oh God, as we give, to give with a cheerful heart. And you, O oh God, then will bless that which we give to the ministry of this church and this world. In the name of Christ, amen. It is good, it is indeed good to be in the house of the Lord, and what really makes it great is to be with you, and what really makes it great is that we have come together to worship. We have come to worship the one true God. We have come to give praise to Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, who died for us, that we might have life, and that we might have it in abundance. I'm going to ask if you are able that you please stand and let us sing. Come, now is the time to worship.
You may be seated. One of the greatest things about coming to worship is that it offers us an opportunity to reflect in our own being, to offer ourselves before God, to say, Lord, I need you. And I think that's a prayer that all of us can say no matter what's going on in our lives. Lord, I need you. So let's this song be your prayer. Lord, hear our prayer this morning. Please bow your heads in prayer. Almighty God, we're so glad that you are here, that you hear our prayers, that you hear our needs. 
And the greatest need we have is you. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Kids, I need you to come up here for a time of story. I hope we're going to learn some new things about you today. And so I'm going to, going to ask you some questions very quickly. And I need you to give me an answer. Okay? How many of you know, think you know what you want to be when you grow up? What would you like to be when you grow up? A doctor. A doctor. All right. I might need you, so... Beware. Okay. Who else knows what they might want to be? Give it a shot. What do you think you want to be right now? Something that makes me happy. Well, that would be great, whatever that might be. Something that makes you happy. Anybody else got a plan? No plan? I mean, you're not going to go anywhere, right? You have no plans. You're just going to, you're going to, how many of you are going to stay a kid the rest of your life? Well, <laughs> Melissa, we know that. Well, you know, I think you maybe should, but you've got to have a plan. You know, the thing of it is, when you go on vacation, do you guys just, uh, does mom, do mom and dad or just get up and say, get in the car, we're going on vacation, like uh, Kevin said this morning. Is that true? Is that the way it happens, or do you plan it? I think maybe you plan it. I think mom and dad plan it. Yeah. You know, the thing of it is, we have to dream dreams. Some of you are going to be great, great people. You know that? You're going to be wonderful. You're going to do wonderful things, unbelievable things. Your imagination is going to take you to places that make you happy, make you be a doctor. Some of you are going to become maybe teachers. Some of you will become maybe uh, a scientist that's going to invent something great, something new, something that hasn't been invented yet. What might yours be? What? Scientist. You're going to become a scientist. We need scientists desperately right now. Some of you are going to become great mathematicians. Some of you are going to become, you know, I think you are amazing. But it all starts with a dream that one day God places in your heart and says, you know what I want you to be? And God told me when I was a little boy, God said, I want you to be a pastor. And I said, I don't want to be a pastor. <laughs> well, guess what? Who won? God. And God usually does. So I want you to dream God's wonderful dreams for you because they are wonderful. And then you have to start down that path. And one day, if you keep going forward in that path, you're going to become exactly what God wanted you to be. Even right now, God already knows what you will be when you become, well, let's just say an adult, okay? Not old, like some that you might know, but just an adult, okay? I am really excited for you because I, I, I'm so excited about this that I just have to stop and thank God. So let's pray. God, I am so excited for this group right here. You know what, Lord? You have, you have pastors up here. You have teachers up here. You have scientists. You have doctors. You have, you know, you have what wonderful, wonderful beings doing wonderful things. And so I just pray, Lord, your blessing upon them that they might become everything that you wanted them to be because they will surrender their lives to you and that you will make them happy, and they will find happiness in what they do. I'm excited for that, Lord Jesus. And I know you are too, Jesus, because that's what you want. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, start dreaming those dreams, guys, okay?
I have asked James Beatler to come up this morning and read our scripture. He'll be going back to Pittsburgh State today, and so safe travels. Yeah, first day of class is going to be fun. All right. Thank you, James. <laughs> Philippians 3, 12 through 14. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already achieved or already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Going back to the university to finish, to pursue, to move forward in your life with what God has for you. It's just the beginning, trust me. Uh, our prayers will be with you. Would you bow with me in prayer? Lord, you are our light, you are our hope, you are our salvation. We come today to praise you, to give you thanks. We come today to be with friends, to meet new friends, and again, to give you thanks. You are gracious, O oh God. Lord, we lift up before you the million-plus people that are struggling with this shutdown, government shutdown, we just pray, Lord, that those who, of us who may not be impacted might be sensitive, that we might be open, that we might be providers if called upon. Father, we lift up our nation before you. You know our hearts, you know best what, what is needed, and what is needed is you. Let us be the people of your word. Let us be what Jesus has called us to be. Let us be the agents of your peace, your hope. We lift before you our own community. And we know, Lord, that, that we are just a, a little bit of a microcosm of all of what's going on. And again, help us to be the peacemakers. We lift up our church. Like our country, like our community, our church is in a time of transition, but we are not lost. We are just proceeding forward with you at the helm. You are guiding us, you are directing us, you are encouraging us, and you have blessed us. So this morning we come to worship, to surrender, to surrender to you. In your name I pray, amen. Well, the trifecta of holidays is over. All I can say is thank goodness. No, I'm just, you know, but it is. Thanksgiving. Christmas and New Year's, I mean, my goodness, from the late last part of November till the first part of January, we are in holiday mode, and it's just a, it just seems like a marathon of sorts. But it's the new year now, and it's a new beginning, and we get to start all over again. So whatever you didn't finish last year, you still have this year to finish, and whatever you didn't begin last year, you can begin it today, you can begin it this year. You know, that's a wonderful thing. A new year is a time to dream God's dreams for you. It's a new year. 
Where, what would you like to do this year? Where would you like to be? It doesn't matter what your age is. What would you like to, you know, what is your dream? What's God's dream for you? But I know one thing. For me, it's time for me to put on my interim hat again. And not just your pastor hat. The holidays, you know, I put on a pastor hat, so to speak, because we were celebrating the holidays and it was a time to just be the pastor. I love the uh, clip that uh, Berlee found on the internet for our bulletin today. Uh, you'll have to uh, take a look at that if you haven't seen it. Take, pay attention to it. You know, psychiatric help, five cents. And she says to Charlie Brown on the cruise ship of life, which way is your deck chair facing? Well, when I look for real inspiration, I go to two sources. I go to the Bible, and I go to Charles Schultz. You know, it's really true. There is the gospel according to Peanuts. You know, there is that book that was written, and uh, it's really quite clever, and it's quite uh, creative, and uh, bears a lot of truth. But your cover gives us a little insight into where I'm going, and now for the rest, story, rest of the story. I see on the cruise ship of life, I have to ask you, which way is your deck chair facing? You see, there's a little conversation between Lucy and Charlie Brown. And he's gone to her for a little bit of help, and she asks him the obvious question. And so she says to Charlie, Charlie, here's the point. Some place it so they can see it where they have been. So you're on the cruise ship. I don't know. How many have here have been cruising? You've been on a cruise ship. Quite a few of you. you know. And the reality is, you know, on the cruise ship, you can go to the, the back of the ship, I don't know what that's called in ship language, the back of the ship, the front of the ship, or the side of the ship, I don't know what those are called. But, you know, I, I've only been on one cruise, and I explored the whole, the whole ship, walked around it, and so on and so forth. So Lucy's point is some place their, their deck chair so they can see where they've been. That means that they are probably in the back of the ship. Some place it so they can see where they are at the present. And some place that she says, so they can see where they are going. And Charlie Brown's reply in the rest of this cartoon is, I can't even get mine unfolded. <laughs> so it isn't a matter of where am I looking, I can't even get the darn thing unfolded. So which way is your deck chair facing on the cruise ship of life? Is it facing the back of the ship? Are we content with seeing where we have been? I hear that a lot. That's our history. Where have we been? And boy, we can talk about that for hours upon hours upon hours, can't we? First Baptist Church has an incredible history, wonderful history. But you know what? The sad part of it is, that means that if we dwell there, we are living in the past. Is it facing outward from the side of the ship? Are we content with just seeing the present? Well, that's kind of to ignore the history and really not care about the future. It means I'm just happy with what's going on right now. Hey, it feels good. And if it feels good, let's just keep doing what we're doing, right? Well, we'll see. Is the jack chair in the front of the ship looking out to sea? Are we eager seeking, eagerly seeking where we are going? Are you at the, the front of the Titanic up there where, you know, he's standing at the front, looking out front, looking forward, my hope this morning is that I can help us get our deck chair unfolded first and facing forward. The Apostle Paul gives us an incredible insight into setting up our deck chair. First, he admits, notice that, he admits he has not yet reached perfection in his life. Can we collectively agree that we have not reached perfection yet? I mean, it, uh, no matter how great things are, is there not room for improvement in any of us? I mean, is there room for improvement in your life? Can I get an amen if there is? Amen. You know, I, I have to say, folks, I mean, 
Come on, we haven't yet arrived. We have not yet reached perfection. That's what Paul is saying. Well, I'm not there yet. I'm not there. The reality is that we can be more than we are right now. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen? You believe you can be more than you are right now, like the kids up here? What do you want to be? Can you believe you are more than 10 or 11 or 8 or 9? Can you believe? What do you want to be? What would you like to be when you grow up? Some of us hasn't grown up yet. I can best illustrate this principle that I'm talking about. in a story. And it's a story about Thelma. When Thelma turned 75, now that, that gosh, you know, as I, as I read that story, that's just not far away, folks. I mean, for me. And for some, you've passed that point. For some, it's further away. I didn't ever know if I would ever reach 75 at one point in my life. But here she is, 75, and when her husband passed away, her children suggested that maybe she should move to a senior living community. I've got to confess, I've been looking at those. You know, I'm at that point. I have to confess about that. And so, she was a gregarious and life-loving person. And Thelma decided that she would do that. And so she moved into one, and it wasn't long. I mean, she moved in. She was such a vivacious, life-loving person, so exciting to be around. That wasn't very long. And she, at age 75, when she moved in, became the activities coordinator. And she had great, I mean, she was just, had everybody doing things, and she was the life of the party. Her new, and, and so when she turned 80, her newfound friends showed her appreciation by throwing a surprise birthday party. And so, Thelma walks in and everybody cheers and it's a great, great party. And, and uh, she's seated at this one table and sitting across from her on the table is a handsome looking man that she has never met before. And after, at age 80, she goes to him and she says, I need to apologize. I, I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't take my eyes off of you. You remind me of my fifth husband. <laughs> he says, how many times have you been married? She says, four Now, she wasn't, hadn't been married four times, but it was a way to get to him, ask the question. Which way, which direction do you think Thelma's deck chair was facing? She wasn't looking at the past, I can tell you that. She wasn't really dwelling on the present. He was kind of looking forward. You see, Lucy is right. Which way our deck chair is facing tells us a lot about ourselves, our church, our community, and our nation. How did the Apostle Paul put it? I am focusing all my energies on this one thing. On this one thing. Find that one thing. And what is it? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So Paul is giving something uh, for us to build our lives on. We are to press on to what lies ahead in our lives. And for that we, to happen, we have to let go of what's holding us from what Jesus has for us. We have to let go of, what Je of holding on to the past so that Christ can give us what he has for us. You know, the, the sanctuary is an interesting place here. And, you know, I, as I walked in this morning and I looked at this, I saw, when you look, when you sit the way you are right now, what, what, are, you, what are you looking at? What's up there? The cross. The cross what? The cross goes before us. We follow the cross because we worship the one who died on the cross. Now, 
if the cross was back there, something would be missing in my opinion. If the cross was on the side, but our focus is on we're moving forward, we're moving forward with Jesus. Because of Jesus, we are more than the sum of our past. I'm going to say it again. We are more than the sum of our past experiences. Do you agree? Amen? Are we not? Is First Baptist Church not more than it once was? Absolutely. Why do I know that? Because God is not through yet. God is not finished. God did not bring you this far, this place, this time to say I'm done. There is more to come. To those who have gone before us, you know what? I hear them telling us to press on to what lies ahead. Jesus has set us free from guilt, from shame, from anger, regrets, or sorrow. No matter how great the past was or how bad it was, theologically speaking, and I believe this with all my heart, the best is yet to come. Amen. Boy, believe it. Get excited about it. The best is yet to come. None of us are truly free to be Christ's disciples until we break with everything that hinders our commitment to the Lord. History provides an incident illustrating this important principle. When Julius Caesar landed on the shores of Britain with his Roman legions, he took a bold and decisive step to ensure the success of his military venture. It's a true story what, what Julius Caesar did. When he got his troops on the shores of Britain, he ordered his troops to go to the edge of the cliff and look over the cliff. All the ships were fully engulfed in flames. He had ignited his own ships. There was no option. We cannot go back. We can only go forward, is what Julius Caesar said. And with that, he won. When you go forward with the Lord, there's no turning back. Move forward. The past is the past. Life is found in what lies ahead. Hope is not found in yesterday's sunset, but in tomorrow's sunrise. And here's the point. I don't think we realize how much we hang on, all of us, to the past. I don't think we realize that. That's well documented by all the stuff we have. I mean, you know. And then... It, the hardest part about me thinking of moving to some kind of retirement place is getting going. It's getting rid of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? No, some, no you, none of you have any clue about that at all. No. Uh, you know, how much better might each of us feel if we would simply let go? and move forward. I, you know, I joke about it, but I, I, I really mean this. Sometimes I think if the Lord could just create a tornado to come and take my house <laughs> and, 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 and you know, well, leave me some clothes, but, you know, but take my house and, I, wow, it's done, you know? <laughs> Moving forward is not easy. It's hard work. But that's what's required of us. In his book, uh, The Last Years, Lee, The Last Years, uh, Charles Flood writes a, a report out of the Civil War. Robert E. Lee visited a Kentucky lady who, who took him to the remains of a grand old tree in her front yard. And there she bitterly complained about, you know, 
the, what, look what the federal artillery did. That was a glorious, wonderful tree. They destroyed all the limbs. They destroyed that tree. And now there's just this trunk. And she looked at Lee thinking that he might say, yeah, that horrible federal... You were unjustly taken advantage of. She wanted some kind of comfort, and what Lee said to her was, cut it down, my dear madam, and forget it. We can't move forward if we carry the past with us. There was a study done on the concentration camp survivors. What were the common characteristics of those who did not succumb to disease and starvation in the camps? And Viktor Frankl was a living answer to that question. He was a successful uh, psychiatrist in Vienna before the Nazis threw him in such a camp. He said in a speech, there's only one reason why I am here today. There's only one reason that kept me alive. And that was you. You see, others gave up hope. I dreamed, he says. I dreamed that someday I would be here telling you how I, Viktor Frankl, had survived the Nazi concentration camps. I've never been here before. I've never seen any of you before. I've given, never given this speech before. But in my dreams, in my dreams, I have stood before you and those words, said those words a thousand times. To use the insights of Frankl, let me suggest as a church, we dream God's dreams. You know what? I really believe this. I think we don't dream big enough dreams. We think our God is so tiny, God can only fulfill little tiny dreams. Not true. Our God can do anything that God wishes to do. To those young people present today, dream what you want to be. Unless you dream it, it won't happen. What if we took our marriages and, and began dreaming what God wants our marriage to be? Imagine the difference. Apply this principle to every aspect of life and watch it make a difference. What do you want to be at work? What do you want to be at home? What do you want to be at school? What do you want to be down the road? And if you can't dream it, it won't happen. So what does Paul say? I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So Paul uses the metaphor of a runner in a race. You never win the race by looking back. <laughs> you know? And you never win the race by running backwards. So I have to ask. We're in that race, but the question is, where are we? Are we sitting in the stands? Maybe we're at the sideline doing stretching exercises. Maybe we think we're in the race, but we haven't taken off the sweats to really run. So are we, are we straining to reach the end of the race and receive the prize which God has for us through Christ Jesus? What is it you and I are looking forward to? We Christians are looking forward to eternal life in God's kingdom. But what is it you are looking forward to in this life? How about reconciliation, peace, hope, new life, and more? We can't have that holding on to the bitterness, pain, and hurt. So which way, which way is our deck chair facing? I think we would do well to remember the words of Will Rogers. Young people don't even have a clue who that is, but us older ones do. He said that even if you're on the right track, you'll just get run over if you sit there. You know, wise wisdom. So, it's important to know which way our deck chair is facing. But it isn't enough just to know. We need to press on. We have to want to. In closing, I thought I'd leave this metaphor with you. High in the Alps is a monument raised in honor of a faithful guide who perished while ascending a peak to rescue a stranded tourist. Inscribed on that memorial are these words. He died climbing. A maturing Christian, 
growing Christian should have the same kind of attitude right up to the end of life. So my friends, let us live today with hope because in the promise of God, the best, I believe, is yet to come. And let us then strain to receive the prize that awaits us in Christ Jesus, both now and in eternity. Let's pray. Father, all we have is tomorrow. Let us rejoice that we have it. Let us celebrate today. But tomorrow will come. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation, number 557. If any are here wish to unite with this church by your profession of faith or looking for a new church home, I invite you to come and stand with me. It could be a new beginning. It could be a time of saying, yes, I have found where I wish to be. I want to be a part of something that is moving forward, and I want to be a part of that. So if that's your statement of faith, I invite you to come and stand with me as we all sing, Open my eyes that I may see. Now our congregational, our new congregational response is we are one in the bond of love. Let us sing it twice, the first verse only. <laughs> 